Y'all still here? <laughs> Anyone have a question? Uh, no, I do not. Um, I think the law, the, the law that was passed, uh, is is sound, and I know the the families involved here of the victims uh, need justice and need closure, and the we intended for this law to accomplish that, but I, I disagree with the decision. Oh, no, I know they've been in process for some time. I know they presented a, a letter or affidavit to the Supreme Court as a part of that de decision-making process. I have, have no, uh, no latest information on when it's going to be available, but I'm confident it will be available. Yes, sir. Anyone? Chip? You're right, we did challenge that. Uh, there were a number of us as attorneys general that uh, back in, in that began that case, and it's, uh, uh, you're correct, there's been yet another, another decision. I don't see how the decision today about the um, mandate, the enforceability of the mandate affects the, the status quo. That there's no penalty for not obeying the mandate one way or the other. I don't see how it has any impact. Yes, sir. I think that that, that was, this is another anniversary, another sad anniversary of that event. I think that the, that event and others have shown that the people of South Carolina uh, respect each other. Uh, the behavior, the response to these tragedies, terrible events, has been excellent, has been heartwarming, has been uh, one of uh, the, the appropriate kind of conduct without anger and riots. And I, I think that we are, uh, our, our people are, as has been noticed by others from around the world and around the country, are, are different from a lot of places. And it's, it's sad that we have such things happen. Yes, sir. Uh, some people say that the Secretary of Commerce and the South Carolina governor is the most important point that they make. Can you talk a little bit about how you approach that? Do you have to recruit Mr. Lifesey? How did you go forward? Well, we, we, it is it's a very important position because of the, the three pillars of our success. One's the economy, the other's education, and the third is the environment. And if all of them are not strong and working together, then we're not reaching our maximum potential. So uh, to say that, it, it, you, you must say that they all work together as, as uh, Secretary Hitt and Mr. Leitze have recognized today, they have to all fit together. But it is certainly in the period that we are entering now post pandemic, where our state took a very careful, measured, determined and limited approach to shutting things, limiting the activity, the economic activity of our people. We're in a much better position than maybe all, but certainly most of the states in the country to really uh, make some great transformative progress uh, right now. So it is very important because that is the agency that is, is involved 100% in uh, creating, allowing, encouraging the development of jobs and careers and commerce. But with, without the assistance of others, the Department of Employment and Workforce, the uh, Parks, Recreation and Tourism, Health, Law Enforcement, it's all intertwined. And as, as uh, was mentioned here earlier, we, we have a, a great group of leaders and people in our, all of our various agencies, as well as great collaborations and 
uh, connections, relationships with businesses and leaders and, and people all over the state. So we, are, it, the Department of Commerce will be right at the center of everything that we're, we're, we're doing. Secretary Hitt has been talking about leaving for publicly for, for quite a long time. He has. Um, was it a was it challenging to, to find this replacement? Were there other folks you were looking at? You know, how, how, just to kind of follow on to well, the question, how did how this process go? Well, we were fortunate that that Bobby Hitt agreed to stay as long as he did because he's, he's been talking about retiring for, for some time now. But he, he agreed to, to stay. He had a number of projects that he'd been working on for a long time, and we wanted him to, to finish those. Uh, but there are a lot of people in our state who had advice and insight on what, uh, what traits, what sort of experience would be ideal as they saw it, uh, whether it's uh, manufacturing, where we have a very strong base. We make fighter planes in Greenville and passenger planes in Charleston, automobiles, tires. We export more tires and automobiles than I think most anybody. But we, th there are other uh, emerging technologies in areas as well, one being pharmaceuticals, and you know we've taken steps there. So the, the field of endeavor is growing and growing, but what we must do is be sure that we continue to solidify and expand those uh, avenues, those possibilities and careers that we have while always looking over the, the into the future to see that we will be uh, ahead of the new things coming so we can take advantage of them. And uh, that's, that's one thing that uh, because of our response to the, to the virus, the measured, the careful way we did it with, without shutting down businesses all over, over the state, that we're in a, a very good position to take advantage of that. So there's, there's a lot happening out there in technology and innovation and imagination. And I think that we have the team to, uh, to harness that and to take South Carolina forward. Two more questions, Mr. Thank you very much.